What's up, I'm Troubleshoot. Valorant has just updated to Unreal Engine 5. And of course, in this quick video, I'll be showing you how to optimize it for the best performance. That being said, this video is not going to cover Windows optimization at all, which is super important, especially for this game. You'll find that linked in the description down below. And of course, an NVIDIA optimization guide, as well as a couple of other related, really useful things. So this video is only going to cover the in-game graphics options. Simply fire up your game, head across to settings in the top right, followed by settings, and in here on the video tab, we can get started. Starting at the very top, display mode should definitely be set to full screen for the best input latency, and of course your resolution should match your monitor. If you'd like to learn how to do a stretched res, I will show you in this video in just a bit. You'll find a timestamp down below, but for now at least, I'll leave it at my default normal native resolution. Click apply, and then we can continue. Limit FPS on battery, obviously it sounds like a good idea, but if you're playing on a laptop or handheld and the power cuts for some reason, your FPS will drop down to whatever is listed here. 60 is more than playable, but of course, a lot of people like to have that a lot higher, so for that reason, I'd recommend leaving it off. Then limit FPS in menus, I definitely would recommend. It uses less GPU power, generates less heat, keeps things cooler, and uses less electricity, also important on handhelds. Here you can set the max FPS to 60, that's more than fine. Limit FPS in background, if you find yourself alt tapping out of the game in anything but full screen, it'll be capped down to this FPS. If you find that YouTube, Discord, things like that are lagging when you tap out, set this to on and make sure the max FPS in background is a lot lower than whatever it's set to right now, if that's an issue for you. Then limit FPS always, I'd recommend leaving off. And of course, cap your FPS using your graphics card control panel. If you can't do that, you can cap your FPS here. Why would you want to do that? Well, if you're trying to record and it's stuttering, or you're trying to watch YouTube on a different screen, Discord, etc., things in your PC are lagging, capping your FPS to slightly below what you're actually getting can, of course, improve that pretty drastically. Not only that, but it can also help smooth out frame pacing, timing, and of course, make things feel generally a lot more consistent. You can consider turning this on if that's something that you're looking for, for me at least, I'm chasing high numbers here, so I'll leave it set to off. Then finally, NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency. If you have this option on NVIDIA GPUs, set it to on. If you have a really low powered CPU, set it to on plus boost. Then we can head across to graphics quality at the very top over here. Multi-threaded rendering should definitely be turned on pretty much on any PC, unless for some reason you're running on a really low powered CPU, in which case you may benefit from turning it off. Then essentially everything here you crank down to low and off as such. Anti-aliasing should have a minimal impact on system performance. And of course, MSAA 2 or 4X is gonna get rid of sharp jagged edges that may be distracting to look at if you're someone that's sensitive to that. Then anisotropic tropic filtering, while the number seems pretty big, should have basically no impact on performance at all. This just takes whatever textures you currently have loaded and makes them look slightly better by filtering them. 8X is probably more than fine on most systems. You'll barely notice a difference. The only thing that I would recommend raising here is the texture quality to high. This game doesn't use a huge amount of VRAM and most, if not all, modern graphics cards, especially if you're getting some pretty good FPS numbers, is most likely going to be able to handle the texture quality set up too high. This will make things look infinitely better in game, be it weapons, players. I'd also recommend setting material quality too high as this affects the world's textures and will make the environment look way, way better. These two options cranked up too high shouldn't really cost you anything. And of course, they'll greatly improve your experience while you're playing the game. Now at the very bottom over here, improve clarity. I would recommend turning this on, but of course, play around with this to see which one you prefer. Then cast shadows while you may think this has to do with play models, things like that, a competitive advantage? No, this just is yourself casting shadows onto your player model or view model, such as your weapon. Leave it off, it's all fine. With these super basic changes, you should see a huge improvement in performance, especially after you've restart the game. On the stats tab here, you've got a couple of presets that you can choose from based on whatever you're trying to debug, whether it's input latency, system performance, or network info. Alternatively, you can drill down through each individual thing over here and set it up as you see fit. So performance indicators for your FPS, CPU, etc., input latency, network latency, packet loss, and shooting errors at the very bottom down here. If you've never set this up before, things that I would recommend is client FPS, text only. Scrolling down to input latency, none of these are really too important if 
you're just a general player trying to play the game. But of course, if you're someone trying to hyper optimize for the best latency, I'd recommend turning on game to render latency, which is the total of CPU and GPU. But of course, you can separate them up here. That should cover most of what's going on here, except for packet loss, which I would also recommend turning on. Just so you know, if anything susly is happening with your internet, if it is, you should consider pausing downloads, connecting using a cable instead of wireless, and things like that. That's pretty much it. Shooting error, your preference. For me, I'll leave that off, and that's that. And of course, something I completely forgot to mention is on the general tab at the very bottom, make sure network buffering is set to minimum, otherwise network latency could become a small issue. Do that for basically any kind of network connection, turning this on won't really help in any situation. So I'll close my settings here, and I'll head into a custom game so we can check things out. And there we are. We hopped into a game, and of course our FPS is sitting solidly at around 600, 700, which is fantastic, even just barely touching 800. The game looks not too bad at all, and of course a lot of the heavy lifting is being done by the material and texture quality. If we lower this to low, you can see the huge difference. So here's it on high versus low, a pretty big difference. And obviously performance wise, nothing should change. I've enabled River Tuner here for a much more detailed FPS counter, and I'm sitting at a solid, let's say 550 FPS with everything set to low and pushing up the material and texture quality, absolutely nothing changes, which is exactly what we'd hope. It's basically a free raise in quality. And of course, anisotropic filtering at 8X, we're sitting at a solid 480 FPS, moving to 16, still the same place, down to 1X, still around the same place it is jumping around quite a bit but that's just how it goes when we're getting such high fps numbers ultimately it's not that bad at all you can see the frame time is jumping around between one to five milliseconds which isn't the best and that's the reason you might want to cap your fps obviously 600 is a great number of fps to be getting but you're not going to see all of that all the time so the best way to improve that is of course use something like river tuner which we can cap our fps to let's say 360 tapping back in we should basically be hitting that number all the time and as you can see frame time is completely locked to two milliseconds which is fantastic just by doing that you've pretty much guaranteed yourself a solid frame time as long as your fps cap is well below what kind of fps you're getting in game this way your system can be as stable as possible but yeah that's really that let's quickly talk about stretch res so i just right clicked my desktop and chose the nvidia control panel inside of here under change resolution followed by customize over here where you have your correct monitor selected you can choose create custom resolution except and inside of here, you'll have your horizontal and vertical pixels. In my case, 2K, 2560 by 1440. Yours could be 1920 by 1080 or 3840 by 2160, for example, 4K. Whatever you're going to do here, make sure your horizontal pixels is exactly 1.45 times your vertical length. This way, you can get a really nice quality stretched resolution. If we set this to 1080, for example, your horizontal pixels should be 1568. This is quite a bit smaller than 1920 of course but if you're going to be playing at 2k for example i'll take 1440 times 1.45 2088 is what i should set here for the horizontal make sure your refresh rate matches your monitor test to see if things are working properly your screen will go black and shortly after it should come back then i'll hit yes to confirm things are happy and just like that it's added to this list it should be ticked meaning that it's working properly okay and now it'll show up in not only the custom resolution here but obviously your windows setting as well in order to apply your brand new stretched resolution it's not enough to choose it in windows and it's most definitely not enough to change it in game if you choose your new resolution in game even ticking fill it'll just adjust your ui scale everything else stays the same to get around this you'll need to hit start type in device and open up the device manager once you're inside of device manager head down to monitors over here and you simply just need to right click and disable all of your monitors literally every one of them this won't actually turn them off and you can very much still interact with them record them live stream etc everything's working fine once we've done this change your desktop resolution to your stretched res in my case this one over here apply we'll choose yes and of course make sure under size and position that you have it set to full screen here both of them for the correct monitor that you're trying to play the game on now the reason we had to do this is because when you start up valorant it'll grab your displays resolutions i guess 
from something that looks through your device manager plus minus. Because we've now disabled your monitors, quote unquote, I actually have no idea how they work after you do that, but they do. And the next time you fire up your game settings video, you should now see resolution shows as custom. There's no monitor attached. All you need to do is click fill and apply. And once you have, congratulations, you're now playing true stretched. It is absolutely mind blowing that you have to go through this much effort to get it done. But I really don't expect anything more from the same company that disabled my keyboard when they first forced me to install Vanguard. But anyways, besides that, you can now very easily see that this is actually stretched and it's exactly what we were hoping for. Now, it's just a bit sad that you have to go through this much effort to get it working, but there you have it. Anyways, that's really that. And with that, we've really optimized everything important. I've just uncapped my FPS here so you could see a difference if there was any between a stretch resolution and not using one. Of course, everything I showed you in this video is your preference to change if you need to, but for the most part, the game looks more than good enough here. And of course, your performance should be boosted way up high. But yeah, that's it. Hopefully you found this video useful. Again, check out the Windows optimization guides to get even more out of your system linked down below. Thank you for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.